Hey guys, it's Matt. It's always good to make a back to the basics video, especially all that we've learned in the last two years or so and what we've learned exponentially in the last two to four months. Learned exponentially on steroids, the power of 10 to the whatever. When the system bites off this much, it must reveal, it must give itself away. It's a yin and yang reality. Can't make moves over here without giving something back on the other side for us to notice that we can use for ourselves. So there's probably still a few thousand people here that are relatively new and they'll need this basic understanding. But I think even the old guard, the 10th level Jedis, there are, 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 will, will benefit from this too, because it's always good to backtrack and say, where are we in terms of understanding this bizarre lifetime, this bizarre reality? And there's some new elements, some, some new things I've never even talked about are in this presentation, but it's mostly things you've seen before. So will I be right about everything? Of course not. But even if I'm wrong about certain elements, I think the imagery I present or the analogies I present are useful in understanding how to live or, or to maybe as a guide on how to live your life in this very, very degrading, sick system that we find ourselves in. So it is not important to understand the details of reality. How does this work? What was Dick Cheney's actual role as handler? All of that stuff is useless. We've moved past it. Pointless. It is only important to understand the parts you can apply to yourself. It is only necessary to understand the aspects of what can help you and what can hurt your journey. To differentiate, the elements of each event or the elements of how things are pulled off, who, what, where, when, why, and how, are useless breadcrumbs. Only the why, in some cases, is a useful exercise of interpretation. Only why, of all the elements, is worth looking at, and then only in some cases. For example, why is the system doing this, and what does it want from me? Oh, I, I see why it's doing it now. It wants me in fear. So then I can realize that. I can examine the why. Oh, it wants me angry. It wants me to go pick up a gun. That examination of the why, in terms of what it wants out of you, is useful. The other elements are useless. Information needed before we get started. The idea of the reality bubble. And again, even if you don't agree, this is how things work, it's still a useful imagery in understanding, for example, why you see certain things and your aunts and uncles and cousins just can't see it. So even if it's wrong, it's still useful because you could say, hey, I have my own reality bubble and you know I'm not going to get upset at them because they're actually carrying a reality that's a little bit different. So again, I don't know exactly how this works, but I've seen too much of this to, to believe it's anything other than this. So to one degree or another, we each have our own. Now, most elements inside are common. Of course, like who won the last Super Bowl? Everybody's going to say the same thing. Um, you know, is Michael Jackson alive or dead? Everybody's going to say the same thing. But I guess I shouldn't jump. I shouldn't jump to conclusions on that because um, you know Mandela affected people may, may see things change. But we're gonna we're gonna go there in a little bit. Not quite yet. But it's wrong, I believe, to assume that all the elements in our reality bubbles are the same. Oh, my elements are exactly the same as my friends or my aunts. I th guys, I just think we've seen too much at this point, and we just cannot explain why others see things so completely differently in certain areas than we do. And there are other ways to explain that than carrying different reality bubbles with some elements that aren't the same. But even, if, again, if it's wrong, it's still a constructive way of kind of moving through life and not getting upset at people around us that don't see everything the way we see it. It's also an important uh, concept, the, the imagery of this reality bubble is important in understanding this next piece, which I call the screen. Now, we'll get to the org chart of the reality later, but the, the overhanging reality basically acts like it's alive. I call it not milk. It's Clinton backwards. Okay, It almost is like a, a living system. Um, what exactly is it? We don't know. We'll never know. Is it Satan itself? Eh, maybe. Is it an AI that's hijacked a, a sort of an, a, a quantum simulation that we're in? Yeah, maybe. We'll never know. 
Okay, we'll never know. It doesn't matter to chase that breadcrumb. We basically know this is how it works. The screen is everything outside your immediate vicinity. Okay, everything outside the screen is this guy's reality bubble. Imagine that bubble around this guy is, and you're standing there is an IMAX screen. So everything inside is yours. Your cat jumps on your lap. It's yours. You have an intimate uh, encounter with your wife or something. That's yours. All inside your reality bubble. Everything else out basically very quickly touches the screen. The screen is not on your side. The screen is of the um, not nilk reality. Okay? And it surrounds your reality bubble like this. Just imagine a giant IMAX wrapped around you. Now, this is the third concept to basically understand, in my opinion, what is going on here. Wet cement. You are the solidifying agent, it says. Wet cement. You are the solidifying agent. So this, in my opinion, how what basically this quantum reality works, using quantum particles, uh, photons of light, whatever. Okay. The screen or, or the, the, the living reality around your reality bubble Okay, the, the something that's really out to screw us all over. That's its role. It plays the the Satan archetype, the adversary, the the destructor. No doubt about it. I mean, we we know that. It projects some sort of image on your reality bubble, or a concept, or an idea, like something happening now. You should be in fear. You should be afraid of this, or something relatively benign, like you should think. Um, LGBTQA lifestyles are the greatest thing of all time. You know, the, the, the screen brought that up 15 years ago. It started in of you should think people like Bruce gender and everything somebody's doing like Bruce is the most wonderful thing of all time. That's a concept that's then put out on the periphery of your reality bubble. And it can't just reach in and grab you and force it on you. It can't force the castor oil down your throat. Okay, it can project, a, it's at first a very blurry image that, oh, transgender lifestyles are the most wonderful thing of all time. And of course, there's millions of examples how society is moved into a, into a strange or sick position over time. We use the transgender. Okay. It's blurry. Now, if you reach up and grab it and say, that's wonderful, and take it into your reality, then you've, then you've done its job. But what it will do is it will use its minions and it'll present the IMAX. The, the minion for the example I'm talking about was Bruce Caitlin, of course, just playing a role that Bruce doesn't want to ever, didn't ever want to be a woman. Absolutely just played, or just as an actor, played a role. When all the magazine covers, all the minions then line up and they try to bring, they, they start to clarify the image and they want you to take that into your reality. And unfortunately, because we share aspects of a reality bubbles person to person. If, if, if the masses embrace the, the Bruce Caitlins, then you know, we have a collective reality as well. They will then take it and then they'll, they will cement, you know, they will, they will harden the cement. Now this is now part of our reality, which it is, the example I'm talking about. It is. It may have been wet for five years, but the not milk reality can't harden the cement on its own. You know, like when you mix cement, sand, and uh, I don't know, Portland cement and whatever the other ingredients are. I'm, I'm not thinking uh, clearly of what they are at this time. Um, I, you know, I, I haven't mixed <laughs> cement in its, in its, in its raw uh, component parts since the, probably the 70s with my grandfather. But you know what I'm saying? You, there, it takes certain elements to come together to harden. So that our, we have that ultimate... Um, you know, agent to harden the cement. And the screen through its minions presents all of these ideas to us, but actually we are the ones necessary, in my opinion, to harden the cement. And and it's just a, it's just a test from their perspective as to all the bizarre and sick ideas they keep floating out on the screen, on the periphery of your bubble, the masses have been conditioned now to take in almost any level of debauchery, of any level of absurdity, they seem to want to embrace now, and and they're hardening the cement and making that new, really uh, destructive element inside a reality or perverted element or debauchery element in a permanent part of our reality. But it can't do it on its own. Okay, It cannot do it on its own. It uses its minions. We'll talk about that in a little bit. 
We're also living in sort of in so, some sort of a script of some kind is playing out. This reality, the world you live in, isn't as real as you thought as when you were a kid. It, is it a matrix, a simulation, a, a, you call it a fluid reality, a holodeck? I, we don't know, but it's definitely more fluid and changeable than we thought. Okay, the screen facilitates the script. Most people in their lives will read their cue cards and they'll read their canned lines their entire life. They will, their cue cards are shoved into their hands their entire lives and most people will read their canned lines. Now, if you just do that, you are a three-time life loser. I mean, you will, whatever the, whatever the ramifications are or, or for, for, for being a life loser, you will experience that. If you never get off your script, okay, we can talk about that in the future. Um, we are in some sort of a script. Reality is somewhat fluid until it is hardened. The cement is hardened on it. And even actually after it appears to be hardened, we are learning now that it is fluid, especially if you're Mandela affected. Okay, the, the hijackers of reality, whatever their role is, we'll talk about the org chart of the reality in a little bit. Uh, they have their hands on certain reality buttons and levers and can accomplish certain things that are outside of our bookends of understanding. You could call it a basically a supernatural understanding on how to control reality. There's too many things we've seen now over 10 years that are inexplicable. We have probably a thousand examples, if not a hundred examples, with my favorite, I'm just looking at this picture, uh, being, of course, uh, there should be uh, at least 350 to 500 videos of something happening to the top of the South Tower based on the amount of cameras that were in the immediate vicinity Tuesday morning, uh, including 100,000 tourists, of which about 30,000 would be somewhat close to lower Manhattan. That's minimum, 350 to 500 videos of something happening to the top of South Tower. Because once something happened to North, oh, I don't know, 1,000 video cameras or, or 1,500 would have immediately turned and started filming. There are about 12 videos that exist. It's just in, there's just certain supernatural things like that that can't be explained, and I've gone through that exercise at, at length. If that doesn't, I'm sorry if that's not making sense to you, but you know, just just if if there were no tourists in Lower Manhattan and you just had just the news outlets alone just started filming, there should be 150 video images. So the the point is, guys, there, there's there's whatever is behind the the the, the screen, the not milk reality. And even, even maybe even at the minion level, they have their hands on certain reality buttons and levers that simply we just don't understand. Call it, you can call it magic, a supernatural uh, phenomenon, whatever it might be, a, an actual control on whatever this Mandela effect thing is. You just can't always apply known reality or what's in your bookends to what's happening. You have to be able to, to be able to go outside of it. So basically, to, to, to end on this slide, we're living in some sort of a script. The example here um, is one of thousands. We don't need to look at it anymore. How, well, what a coincidence, you know, the, the monolith from 2001, A Space Odyssey, which here represented by the Millennium Hilton Hotel, is the closest building to the rubble on September 12th, the day after. So the day after, the closest building to the rubble is the monolith from 2001, the Millennium Hilton Hotel that was built to be the monolith. And then we see the movie 2001 uh, coding the 9-11 event and actually carrying forth the current event of today that's going on. So it's just, it's just uh, you know, we, we, for 10 years we did the impossible synchronicities, the bizarro oddities, the ridiculous connections, the absurd and impossible gematria. We don't need to see anymore. We don't need to do that anymore. We live in a script that's playing out. If to, to, the, it should, it's obvious to us then if that's the case, whoever's playing the script out is not on our side, okay? So you go off script. Whenever, when it's trying to shove cue cards in your hand, you, you throw the cue cards away, where most people around us will gladly take them, read their lines, and then ask Master if they read their lines good enough for a system accolade and award. Yes, thousands of these examples, old cartoons predict everything we don't need to see anymore 
Scott's script. Someone, a friend of the channel sent this in. Um, this is, you can't see it off to the right. You can just see a little bit of U.S. Um, because this is cropped. But it's the U.S. Army uh, recruiting station, Times Square, New York. And right above the flag is a, I guess it's a commercial or advertisement for a, a, a new TV series, I guess. But above the U.S. Army recruiting station, uh, it says lies, how to get away with murder. Really? Now look, oh, yeah, of course this could be a coincidence, but not, guys, when you've seen thousands of these over a 10-year period, if you look closely at reality, it will reveal itself in this way over and over again. I don't know, maybe the 10th time it was a coincidence, but not the thousandth time. And, you know, again, over the U.S. Army recruiting station. Hey, you know what? There, there was a lot of good people that are in the military and went through the military. We've all been used by the sick system. We've all been used. The idea is to recognize how we've been used and to throw down the cue cards and to, and to choose a different path. This is the current script. All the stuff plays out years in advance. Oh, it just must be a, a big coincidence. It was a coincidence maybe the fifth time. Now we're on the 50,000th time. And what's playing out right now, um, Grand Central Station or Terminal uh, Rush Hour. Script is playing out now, and they're in the back room going, I cannot believe to the extent <laughs> these a-holes are reading their lines, their cue cards, exactly as we would want them to read them. You know, life goal number one is to look down and see there's these cue cards are being pushed in your hand and to constantly reject the script, to do something else. Break your script. Avoid reading the cue cards that reality hands you. This is just absolute basic number one. There's a lot more I believe we need to do. But you can't do this, uh, you know, you can't even get out of bed in the morning. And there's so many things, if you just take a step back and say, what is this general master reality? Or, and I don't mean to assign it a, a superior position, I mean like an overhanging the highest level. What does it want me to do? How does it want me to act? What does it want me to do socially? How does it want me to run with the Joneses? At all levels during the day, you're allowed to, to follow the cue cards or break the script. You follow the cue. How many people break the script? How many people follow the cue cards? Look around you. Everybody, but he's got the. Uh, somebody didn't like the choice of cars. I kept saying over and over again. So you got the two Mercedes leased in the driveway, and the kids are enrolled, and all this stuff, and you're just running with the Joneses. That's just you're just running with the script of the reality, which is there to screw you over. So this is basic. You can't you can't break the script, and re, re, you can't not read your cues. You know, forget it. That's the that's that's the first inning shit. But it's a yin and yang uh, to a degree here, and it has to reveal clues. The reality leaves truth clues and hints all over the place. For some reason, it must do this. The end of war games. Greetings, Professor Falcon. Strange game. The only winning move is not to play. Just related exactly to breaking the script. The only winning move in reality itself is not to play. This isn't the end of war games talking about a, a thermonuclear simulation. It's talking, it's, it's a truth drop for life itself. Don't play the game that they want you to play. You, you run out on that field and you play their game. Doesn't matter how many goals you score or how many points ahead you are. You're, if you're on that field when the time goes 0-0, zero, zero, you played on that field, you're a loser. You're a life loser. And you're going to take whatever ramifications come with that. Again, well, Matt, how does, why does it, if it's out to screw us, why does it uh, provide hints on how to win? Hints in hundreds or thousands of movies and for forms of media, tens of thousands of hints, if you add up all media, including song lyrics, and how does it do that? Why does it do that? Just, d d well, first of all, we'll never know, so stop trying to figure it out. But we know now it has to, or it does. It's its role. It has to, maybe contractually, whatever, who cares? It does. So look for these hints. You know, I, we did, I did Bagger Vance and, and that movie the other day. We'll get to it again a little bit later in this presentation. But look at things with that set of eyes. How many people ever watched, even listening to this, Truth People? 
how many people ever watched Bagger Vance thinking it was about anything more than golf? Well, it is, no doubt. We have to look at everything like that. And not just in, with current media, all media back through through time. Robert Frost, the road not taken. Of course, it's a truth drop. Does that mean, well, Matt, well, what, um, um, I chose the two paths diverged in a woods. I chose the one less trampled upon or whatever. You know what it is. I don't know. It doesn't matter. The road not taken. Two roads diverged in a woods. One, one led to a whorehouse and the other I, I took. Um, it doesn't matter. It's a truth drop. Does that mean, well, Matt, does that mean that Robert Frost was taken into an eyes wide shut party and he was told to do this by Robert Langdon's Illuminati? And, well, maybe. It doesn't matter. Again, it, these are elements. We Stop chasing the elements. It doesn't matter. Maybe it, 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 uh, the reality itself, flo- the, the, the truth flowed through him through creative, imaginative ideas that he thought were his own. Why do we believe all of our ideas are our own? I mean, most people are automatons of the system anyway. They just parrot and take the download of whatever the script and the master reality wants them to do. So, oh, Robert Frost got a great idea. I'm going to write this poem. But maybe that wasn't even his own thought. Maybe he was taken into the back room of the Eyes Wide Shut party and said, we need to do this because we have to give something back to people who will notice with the eyes to see. Or he wrote this as as a just... Just wrote it for no, with no direction. Just thought it was cool, and but then the system said, "Oh, we can use that. We can use that uh, to push the truth that we have to push in a yin and yang reality." See, the, the 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 reality will will rise things to the top that it needs to take to the top. Sometimes there's truth revealed in it, and sometimes, and most of the time, it, it's it brings to the top very negative minions and elements that it will use in its destruction, like Spike Lee. So we go back through Robert Frost, and we go back, you know, time immemorial. The truth drops. Plato's allegory of the cave. Oh, what a coincidence, right? The allegory of the cave. What a coincidence. It's no different than this. It's the same basic allegory, different cave. <laughs> different cave. Allegory of the, of the cave. If you just think this through, it's absurd, all right? If you think it through, it's, it's absurd. Um... Even if Plato came up with this, that there could be, or men could be fooled, where they're just sitting in front of a projection, where men behind are projecting images uh, on the cave wall, so the men in front believe all that exists in reality is the cave wall, and they never turn around, and they never consider there could be somebody projecting the images. I mean, even if I just, I don't, even if he came up with that on his own and there was this guy named Plato, I'll call him Plato, um, then how would that was preserved through the ages? It's all by design, guys. It's not some guy that sat around that wrote this up and then it just happened to be, pres- how was it preserved? Who did he hand it to? How did it get, how did it get to our time? I, I just don't buy it. It's just the reality has to do this. The reality through its script has to repeat these types of themes over and over again. I don't believe there was a literal guy named Plato who came up with this allegory of the cave, wrote it down, and then what he wrote was preserved through thousands of years. How would that be? You know, wh- do you have the books in your house that you had <laughs> when you were, um, when you were, you know, when you were in, in your, in your, if you're, if you're age 50, in, in the late 70s or early 80s, do you have those books? Probably not. Do you, I mean, it's not even. It's not that good. The allegory of the cave. It's not that brilliant. Where it pre- preserved for thousands of years, it might have never happened. It might be a construct of the reality itself. But if it was preserved, it was preserved by the reality itself because it has to do this stuff. It has to present truth. It has to re- present repeating themes of truth like this. So if you think it through, it's absurd. A guy wrote this stuff down, and then well, who carried it for through time? It's a joke. Give me a break. It's dumber than um, the theory of evolution came from some bacteria. All right, just to keep covering the basics, guys, linear time is, is not real. There's no such thing as time. There's no such thing as time. It's only perception that makes time flow in one direction. It's all based on central perception. Your senses can be liars, and at the best, the senses only give you a tiny bit of the information about your reality. At the best case... You're not getting 99%. 
even we only see the visible light spectrum with all the other radiation spectrums exist outside of anything we can see or experience. Time is not real. No way. You know, the senses are survival filters. We'll talk about that in a second. But I want to, I don't know if I mentioned it in a slide because, um, yeah, so let me just mention it now. So it, it seems from our senses that time can only flow out in one direction. Well, that's very, you know, you have to assume that what seems to work between your bookends is not what is. So because it, it seems this way, I'm going to assume the opposite. I'm going to assume that a massive event can cause a ripple into the future, but also cause a ripple back through time. So either way, uh, there's so many easy ways to prove time isn't real. You can slice and dice a unit of time into an infinite number of, of parts. A second, tenths of a second, hundreds of a second, thousands of a second, because you can go back on that side of the decimal point forever. You can never isolate a moment. You can never isolate a moment as it's happening. It's all perception. There's no such thing as time. Senses are survival filters. It's the Black Mirror episode, Nosedive. And it's not that great of an episode, but she's so concerned about getting likes for everything. Everything is about, it's like Facebook on steroids, this, this um, episode, probably from three or four years ago. So they were, I mean, it's more of that way today than it was when the episode came out. The Black Mirror series can be very predictive, but everything she takes a picture of, she just waits to see what the ratings will be. Oh, my friends gave me five stars out of five stars. She's just enthralled with this. So the senses are survival filters. Knowing what we know now is not in line with survival. What you and I know about reality is not in line with survival. I'll get to that in a moment. So the frontal lobes and senses will actually block truth topic topics for the masses. This gets back to the concept of maybe having different reality bubbles. So that some people know exactly where I'm going here because they've studied it, but let me spend a minute in case you don't. One explanation on why people around us can't see some of the things we see is because to know what we know, for example, about 9-11 or, or the thousand other things we know about these fake events, it's not in line with survival. If I convince my friend that, you know, the, ca the captain, the captain H event, El Capitan, if that's not real, of course it's a joke, of course it's not real, um, but if he believes that, he he's not and he, and he talks about it at a at a dinner party at work or with his boss or he could lose his job or he could become an outcast see the if he's he might not be co consciously aware of that but his subconscious or unconscious knows that so his subconscious or unconscious will block information that is not in line with survival if he believes what Matt believes about al capitan then he could lose his job. How's that for survival with the kids at home? You see what I'm saying? He doesn't. He wants to be Sergeant Schultz in this regard. I know nothing. That's a horrible, but I'm, you know, I try. He, he doesn't want the information. So it, it might be different reality bubbles, but it won't even let our, this, his, his um, unconscious or subconscious won't let our reality bubbles even come together to conjoin, to share information because his senses will block information that's not in line with his survival. And survival in this realm is about, is about the rat race, getting the awards and the accolades of the system, which would be the same as a job promotion. Okay, you understand where I'm, where I'm going with this. Now, the ME, or Mandela effect, to me, many people will disagree, proves that major actions ripple time in both directions. So we talked about the retro causality of 9-11. I'm going to talk about that in a second. Let me, yeah, let me just jump over here first. Retro causality is the concept of where you are open-minded enough to say time does just not work in one direction. That's probably a product of limited avatar senses. Retro causality is putting on the table that a major event will cause actually ripples back through time, like throwing a pebble in a pond. And things can appear in the past that weren't there based on something that's happening in the present. So maybe not this example. Um, you might not think that the Supertramp album, Breakfast in America, where the, if you mirror the, the album cover, the 9 and the 11 are right over the Twin Towers. You might not believe this example is a retrocausality. I just had to use something here. But 
I, the evidence to me is pretty overwhelming that a major event like a 9-11 can cause the past to change, not just the future. You know, getting your back up and saying how ridiculous that is, is just digging in to what your senses are telling you, which mostly they're liars, and to just demand for yourself that the only things that can be going on in this reality is, is just what you understand between the bookends. That's not very open-minded. I mean, it's almost obvious it can work both ways at this point. So I keep retrocausality on the table, even though the Breakfast in America cover you know, might not be at all. Probably isn't. I just had to use something. But if you're Mandela affected, you, 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 nobody in their right mind that's Mandela affected would argue with me about the retrocausality not being on the table. They, that's what this is. I mean, it's 100% to me that Dolly had braces. I mean, the whole scene doesn't make any sense in Moonraker. It doesn't work. There are all sorts of things written all over the internet uh, talking about B Bond girls and, t and saying right in the article she had braces. So if you don't believe the Mandela-affected people that remember clearly seeing the movie where she had braces, it doesn't exist now. Well, why did all these articles appear about the Bond girl and, and Dolly's description has her with braces. She had a full metal mouth. I mean, this is such an obvious Mandela effect. It's okay if you don't see it. Not everybody, you know, you everybody, the reality to me is very fluid. Everybody resets to the new reality. And, you know, if you might say, I saw this in the 70s, she had no braces. You'd be right. In, in this timeline, she didn't have any. You're absolutely right. But don't say like that I'm misremembering or anything like that. There, these, this is just, you know, we've seen so many of these examples, not just outside the Mandela effect with the general retro causality and things like that. Time works in, in both directions. I'm just saying, making this point that if you are Mandela affected, you certainly can't disagree with this slide. I mean, you, you live it. So moving on. Um, this, this regarding the retro, I leave the, for the, for the triggered, leave the Mandela effect behind. Just, we'll just stick to the retro causality. There's too many examples of the destruction of the World Trade Center uh, just in comics alone. And, you know, I don't want to do the same spiel I've been pitch I've done many, many times about, well, man, you know, the World Trade Center is world famous. Of course, they're going to be destroyed in comics, but not 10 times more than other famous buildings, not 10 times more than the Empire State Building. It's not com comparable. The World Trade Center wasn't, they weren't as famous as the Empire State Building and a lot of other buildings around the world. They're only famous now because of what happened. So it doesn't make sense they're destroyed so many times. I believe a lot of this is a retro causality. Neither here nor there, just something to think about. It's not really a line item, a, you know, a, a line element or a key element in this presentation, no matter what you believe. So the minions. Remember back to our reality bubble example with the IMAX screen and the cement that needs to harden? The minions carry forth the script. This is the role of the minion level, which we'll talk about the org chart in a moment. They must convince us, the minions, so in this sense we are used to cement a blurry image or cement the idea back into reality itself. We are, again, that, that agent that cements or hardens the cement. This is this astronaut... Chris, whatever, and he's reporting recently from uh, Corona. Um, that that was the town, Corona, with one letter difference or something. And the astronaut just happens to be doing interview from Corona. Uh, uh, it's in Canada somewhere. I mean, what are the chances? It's all it's, we live in a giant script, all right. And the minions, all the minions do at this level is just carry forth the script on behalf of the. You know, the, the I, I'd say the reality itself. Some people would say whatever stands behind the screen, like Satan or the Saken Architect or, or Archetype or whatever evil stands behind the screen. Some people, you know, the, the, the lineup is endless. Uh, reptilians, other entities, uh, you know, Enlil, Enki, I mean, you know, the, the whodunit bad guy is just off the list. So let's do the org, org, org chart, the org chart of this realm. Okay, let's the picture. It's a good um, fitting picture for what we're going to talk about. You have the, the handler. Handler is Dick Cheney. And then you have uh, President Bush. And I think Sigmund, is that that thing's name? Sigmund, uh, his IQ was magnitudes above George Bush's. Uh, even the handlers. And the, even that, that guy was, was magnitudes above George Bush's. But, but you know, and people yelling at me going, well, Matt, he played that role. He did play that role. 
you know, in the end, they are, are all actors. He might have been a lot smarter than that. He played that role. All presidents are actors. There is no such thing as a real election where people decide. And even if there is, there the system itself is putting up their own their own stuff. They're putting up thing one and thing two already pre-approved. You just they're putting up their two favorite foods. You just pick one or two of their favorite foods. So oh, isn't that great? So whoever gets in, maybe they do let the people decide. But whatever fit you, whatever you pick their favorite food and their other favorite food, they're going to still enjoy their favorite food, and it's going to do the bidding of whatever they want. <laughs> people think it's real. I mean, whatever. I don't want to stray. Here's the org chart of this place in which we live. The reality itself, that bubble, is is that IMAX screen around you, represented by the not nilk reality. The best way to understand it, I don't like breathing life into it, is to be, is believe it's in some way alive. Don't don't like that. I don't like you guys it, p- picturing that, but that's the way to understand it. Under that, you have the minion level. I mean, insert one of tens of thousands of people in this box. Neil deGrasse Tyson, all the news anchors, Lady Gaga, um, the, the the Queen. I mean, it, it, the minion level can be very, very high level, very low level. A local news anchor in Philadelphia, Jim Gardner, is a minion. The Queen. Um, if you, the, the best rule of thumb here is if you see them on TV, it's minion level. George Bush, Donald Trump. Um, you see, you see uh, David Rockefeller, and all. I mean, that's high level family type, whatever. But they're on TV, so that's minion level. Okay, that's not. There could be a warden level there, that that that's between, but we never see it. And it's not worth talking about anymore. Whatever that, you know, people talk about again. The lineup of who done it is no reason to talk about it if we haven't determined what the warden level is net by now. Something that stands bet- above the minion level, above the Rothschilds, but below the the entire reality itself that is representing the Satan, or Satan archetype. If that if that level exists of uh, interdimensional aliens or reptilians or uh, whatever, it does no. There's no point talking about it anymore because we, if we haven't even have a sense of what that is now. There's no reason to even talk about it. It probably doesn't exist. The the to me, my opinion, the reality of uh, influences the minions that basically take a download um so let's go through the org chart um the reality itself the bubble that surrounds your reality and then the bubble that surrounds this snow globe projects its images it's 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 perverted and destructive images on the periphery to move society into the places that it wants and wherever it moves society into into these places, it degrades a human being. It's out to take pieces of you, to degrade you down, to extinguish your light. That is its role, in my opinion. It is well, Matt, you're describing Satan. Okay, well, you know, it is very similar, or maybe it is. I'm not going to take that off the table. So, the not milk reality underneath you have the minions. Again, just throw in anything. Oprah put in this picture. Pee Wee Herman put in this picture. Anything in Hollywood, music, they're they're you're, whether they that see all the minions aren't in on it. They're not. This guy is because he, in, to a degree, he knows that he didn't get into his tuna can and go anywhere up there. So to a degree, he's in on it. He doesn't understand how the the not milk reality works or anything. They they these people, you know, plug in anything here. If they're carrying forth the baton of how the reality wants to degrade us or to get us to believe false ideas, and then they're a minion. Okay, this is a gigantic, you know, apartment block in the pyramid housing complex. So then you have us, spirit beings with a way out. A connection to a way out now, most likely. Some say we are an aspect of higher self here, having a learning experience. Higher self is out of here. One aspect of higher self with multiple aspects playing out at the same time. If not, then we are still, we have a way out. You, 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 you don't, well, prove it. You don't, just go into your inner knowing. We know that. I don't believe I'm stuck here and doomed. And bad. No way. Think, what does your inner knowing tell you? We've talked about this for years. No reason to spend a lot of time on here. We're different from, at this point, we are different from a lot of people that are outside our window. Okay, spirit beings. Okay, you have then degraded humans. I'd say this is like somebody with a foot in both places of so somebody in a foot in or standing in two canoes at once there's maybe a little bit of a tie to spirit 
they're, you know, it's still there. They have a little bit of light, but they're being degraded. You know, somebody, oh, they, somebody just got partner at the law firm and did this and that, and they're just being degraded. They're, you know, they just did that class action lawsuit against the table saw manufacturer. There, there still might be a little something there, and we hope we we want the best for these people. We don't want to damn and curse these people. We, 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 but you know, oh, there's not a whole lot, you know, to the top. They're, they're creating their own Jacob Marley chains, tying themselves to the 666 realm. It's a degraded human. Then you have, I believe these people exist, the NPC, the organic portal, or the automatons. Now, whether these are just creatures of the game, like a Sims character that are part of this experience, or they're actually these degraded humans that have lost everything, the way Gollum or Schmeagol, because of his love for the precious, he was once a living, breathing, nice-looking hobbit who went down to that. That is a, you know, there's your truth drop. Because of his covet of the precious. Okay, I'll do it. <laughs> My precious. <laughs> it became Schmeagol, Gollum. Nasty chips. It became that. That's the truth drop. All right, that is a truth drop. And um, so it, these, the, the NPCs that just take the downloads, just take the downloads, the, the perverted images come from the screen, they get the downloads, and they act just like the minions. They act just like the minions. Um, they may have once been real hobbits, or they may be elements of this game itself, or of this reality itself. It doesn't really matter. You know, we'll never know. So what's the difference? We kind of know what their role is. It's to push whatever the screen, the IMAX screen, wants them to push. Oh, Caitlyn Jenner, Jenner. Oh, that's the most wonderful. They'll push the NPC, organic portals, degraded humans. Oh, that's the greatest thing of all time. Adding one more letter, N, what is LGBTQAI, LGBTQAI. They've added another. To add another letter is the greatest thing of all time. To live like Caitlyn Jenner and just go back and forth between different genders, um, these people will, will will take the download. These people will take the download, or at least the message from the, the the not milk reality that that's the greatest thing of all time. It only it takes a spirit being to say, well, why is this being presented as the greatest thing of all time? And taping your package up and going on stage with in a white dress in front of the ESPN ESPYS. Why is that? Why a courage award? I, well, actually, you know, the, the spirit of being could say that does take courage. To take the duct tape off at the end of the night is very courageous. It's, that'll hurt. But but only a spirit being is able to push back and say, why is this being presented? This is, this is, this is destructive bullshit. These people go along with it, and these people obviously will go along with it, basically almost taking a download, a download to reset the reality to however the reality is being reset by the master not milk system. The minion level, um, um, we've talked about in the past, my best um, explanation is from years past, is just like, you know, my, my the buddy I emailed back and forth with, we, we agree, he knows more than I do about this, but they're, um, you know, sequential um, inc incarnations that don't have a, a spirit way out of this realm. They're kind of doomed to this realm, and they come back, um, in, in some cases, with full understanding or recollection of past lives, where we come in with a mind wipe. But th this group and our group um, are not the same, we, even though we might occupy the same avatar. Um, and they, they, and I'm sorry, they, that, do I have any insider information on this? No. But do they, they act, they act like they're stuck here. With all the weird, sick, you know, you you buy six 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 Fifth Avenue when your father's going to prison, <laughs> Jared, um, because you're just jaded. The reality cannot excite you anymore. Um, that's why Mick Jagger gets with David Bowie instead of his beautiful uh, his beautiful supermodel wives. It's just the same old thing jades these people, and especially if you carry your past life memories with you, nothing's new anymore. Like Brad Pitt says in um, Troy. He says, you know, the, no, the gods envy us, the mortals. He's, in, he's mortal in the movie. Uh, the gods envy us because when you're mortal, everything is more beautiful. And she says something like, uh, you know, something about a dumb brute. I forget what it is, but whatever. Priam's daughter. All right. Let's talk about the not nilk overhanging reality, the Satan archetype. Pinhead is the best... Uh, best um you know graphic for it 
What is it out to do? It degrades a human being. It's out to degrade a human being from a full hobbit down to Schmeagle. Gets a human to choose it. It can only present blurry images on the outside of your reality periphery, your bubble. You must reach up and engage it. Can't come in and grab you around the throat directly. You must engage it. Okay? If it's, it's, it's bordering on coming into our reality bubbles directly on what's going on now, it is. And, if it, and, I, and, it's, and I think it's going to bite off a gigantic 100 million year karma shit sandwich if, if, it, if, it, you know, if it invades, uh, you know, somebody comes in here and throws me down and gives me a, a, a vaccine. That is in, that's in, in violation, invasion of my reality bubble. And um, if it happens, uh, whoever does it, you know, look forward to a 100 million year karma shit sandwich you're going to eat for doing that. Um, humans must choose it. We're learning to reject it. It distracts. Why would it distract? It, it distracts us away from spiritual path. Of course, it tempts and isolates. It hides spiritual higher self. It doesn't even tell most people that they're to even look for the side. Just look for fulfillment in the material 666 realm. Everything you need, all the accolades and awards and hand clapping are, is right here. Everything you need, a human, is right here. And um, it must deliver some truth, though, potentially contractually. Per, per its role, it must deliver some truth through its minions, through its movies. Okay, this is the not milk Clinton spelled backwards. The minion level, again, well, it's, it's always fun to talk about the minion level. Sequential incarnations, um, like uh, Barbara Bush was killed, died, and then there was another Bush born a few days later. What do you say, Matt? That that was Barbara? Yeah, probably. Whatever that entity is, it probably just came right back <laughs> and got its full memory. And um, you know that that just it seems to be that's there's no there's not many ways to explain these people. The endless lies. They just they nobody ever. One of the uh, ways it gives itself away is nobody ever jumps ship. Like you'll never hear of a Neil deGrasse Tyson like. Have, there's no human element, like a spiritual side to these people, where they just say, one day they wake up and they say, no matter what happens to me, whether they shoot me or kill me, I can't do this anymore. I can't lie anymore. I can't just lie for a living every day. I'm not, I'm not going to do this anymore. You, they never, they, they, they give themselves away, like they can never jump ship on their role. You know, you, if, if anything was real, you'd have a few don't see like Randy Quaid going nuts and all that weird. You'd have a few minions saying, I can't do this anymore. Scott Pelley, you know, give the skeleton man giving a live interview saying, you know, you know what? I can't, I'm lying to you and I can't lie to you anymore and just walk off the set. Well, Matt, don't you know there's a delay and that would never be shown? Yeah, I know. I'm just using it as an example. So somebody at some point over hundreds of years would jump ship. So these minion levels are not, they're not as we would, you know, you and I would say, I'm not lying. I can't do this anymore. I'm a real person. And whatever happens to me, happens to me. If they, if they put me in the guillotine, they put me in the guillotine. I'm not lying anymore to anybody. They never, ever do that. And it gives them away. They're not the same as you and I. In my opinion, they have no way out of here. They probably retain their memories of past lives. I don't know this for a fact. It's just, they just, I just observe and they act this way. If you observe enough, there's a whole, not many other ways to explain certain actions if you've observed it for a long enough period of time. And they're not all in on it. You know, uh, they, they do the bidding of the not milk, both in many cases aware and unaware. Even this clown, in terms of space, does he have full knowledge of what space is and is not? In my opinion, no. Does he know nobody took their tuna fish cans up to the moon? Uh, yeah, he knows those things, uh, in my opinion. You know, he's wearing a Saturn rocket on his tie, which is, just happens to be shaped like a needle just when the stuff was coming from China. It's All this stuff is all laid down on purpose and just in a fascinating way. But does he understand the true nature of the reality? No, he doesn't know. He's just a minion. He is an absolute useful idiot. Okay. He knows nobody took the star kiss cans up to an Apollo um, 11 and 12. And uh, the, the tuna fish can got broke on 13 and then 14, 15, 16. 16. He knows that, but uh, he's a useful idiot that doesn't know uh, much. He's not, he's not, he, if he's taken into the back room, it's to serve crimpets. The minions pay homage. All the minions pay homage to the master reality in many ways that shows up in signs and symbols. Well, some 
10th level Jedi going, man, no shit, Matt. What else is new? Well, we got all types here, okay? This isn't this presentation is not entirely for 10th level Jedi's. Go practice your friggin' lightsaber if you don't like this part. Um, you know, uh, now some of these people, you know, who are these people? Are they completely organic portals? Are they just background people? Dolores Cannon type background people of this game? Or are they, you know, I think it's all types. I think some of these people are were once real hobbits or real humans that degraded themselves and now just carry forth the, the um, you know, the, the wishes of the not milk master reality. They could have once been real hobbits and they could talk about coveting the precious, the, the lifestyle they're in very quickly, whatever real stuff probably would be sucked out of them pretty quickly. Now, obviously, the all-seeing eye is their main symbol. You know, what's, I'm just going to just spend a moment on this. Uh, it, it's fun to do this. It really is hilarious. When you look up um, what the all-seeing eye is um, in Wikipedia or the or just mainstream internet sources, I mean, the, the BS they throw at you, it's so funny. And just for any uh, anybody in this community that doesn't know what the mainstream would say about this, it talks about the eye of providence. providence. And it represents, back when the Great Seal of the United States, it just sounds so warm and fuzzy, but it's such bullshit. <laughs> when the Great Seal of the United States was created just after 1776, uh, this is the backside of the Great Seal of the United States, they put the Eye of Providence to represent God watching over the endeavors of the United States. <laughs> That's actually what they say. And people buy it. Oh, God. Yeah, we were founded as a Christian nation. If that was the Christian nation, no, we, no, it wasn't. It's a joke. If that was the case, that if, if that Eye of Providence represent God looking over the United States, some liberal law group would have sued to have it removed years ago. It says, in God we trust in all caps, and they, they'll sign that to basically the Christian God. Well, if that was the case, what happened to all this political correctness? It would have been removed years ago. It doesn't mean any of that. It doesn't, in God we trust. Um, it, I don't even think it doesn't mean Lucifer. It could, but, but it certainly doesn't mean the Christian God. It probably means, in God we trust in all caps. It means, it means money itself. In the God of this world, of the 666 material carbon realm, is materialism, money. The God itself, these are, these are runes on the back, like spells on the back. Annuit coptus, honor our endeavors. Whose endeavors? Yours? No, not me and you. Honor our endeavors, whatever their sick endeavors, endeavors are. You know, and uh, Novus Ordus Seclorum. You know, we, we're called nuts for talking about the New World Order. <laughs> these, these conspiracy nuts talking about the New World Order when it's, it's right on the back of the dollar bill. The New Order of the secular age, the, you know, the new, <laughs> the new world order. It's right there. And we're nuts for saying it, but it's right on the back of the dollar bill. Whatever. Enough of this crap. It shows up everywhere. I mean, literally all 100,000 times it's been presented. I mean, you know, I'm going to make my case here. The person didn't get a friggin' phone call. And it probably hasn't been presented 100,000 times in media and advertisements and videos. It's probably been presented a million times like the number 33 has, like 911 has, and all the other occult numbers. It's, these, are, these are planted by real people in many cases, no doubt about it. Planted by the 33 on the back of the Rolling Rock bottle was put there by somebody that designed the bottle, obviously. But they're also reality markers that flow through reality, that, that, that give people like us a marker that says, oh, this isn't what it seems, or I should pay attention to this. Um. And the eyes that way as well. Everybody that ever posed like that, it wasn't the photographer. The photographer just happened to be a high-level secret society person and said, do this for me, honey. No, it's not. it doesn't always work that way. It works both ways. It comes out of reality itself as a marker, and it's planted both. But, but uh, my objection is, is to, say, to somebody that says it's always planted or always called in. That, that's absurd at this point. We've, looked, we've seen too much of this over 10 years. Now they, the minion level, the highest highest minion level, you know, way above Neil deGrasse Tyson in his in his uh, water bed of donuts. Um, they don't they don't wipe their butt without looking at the stars first. You know, all of DC, the history of DC, everything was laid out under the stars in ritualistic fashion, uh, pointing to through ley lines and all. Uh, you know, it's just all of this stuff. 
is just beyond, if you just look out the laying out of D.C. itself, how certain monuments point to other monuments across the, across the ocean, there's just no way, you know, regular men and women are able to pull this off without an understanding of certain magic or reality buttons and levers or something else. Obviously, it's beyond what a regular man and woman can do and their, their uh, magical tools. Now they love the 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 dog star. The ser- this is a the scene from the Truman show. They love the dog star, the their god star, Sirius. Now your life our lives is meant to be a hybrid between the true man show and the matrix. The genius of the not milk is everyone in the town are Trumans. Very few are actors. Truman show didn't work out because everybody's an actor. Somebody eventually is going to make a mistake. Truman's going to take a sailboat out there and crash into the end of the world. But in this evil genius reality, if you can make everybody a Truman, everybody that lived in that town just believed the same thing Truman, then it all works beautifully because everybody's in, in, in on the same lie. It's that combined with many elements or fluid, fluid reality elements of the Matrix with um, they having their hands on certain reality buttons and levers and things we're never going to understand inside the bookends. Okay, so it's a combination, the life we live between the Matrix and the Truman Show with the script elements coming out more like the Truman Show. Now, I've never said this before, and the 10th level Jedis will go, yeah, but if this is new to you, you're going to think I'm out of my mind and go, why did I spend so much time with this guy? He seemed like he was sane. John Macro's famous thing, still carries it forth when he does his exhibition matches. He does the... Uh, the old man tennis now. He will still, to please the crowd, go on a rant about a ball being out, and he'll go up to the, the ump and say, you cannot be serious. You cannot be serious. Now, when you've been looking at this stuff long enough, do I know for a fact it's an ode or honoring of Sirius, their, their god star? Do I know that for a fact? No. Can I sniff out when something like this happens? And it's just like reading the Matrix code. Yeah, he, he for his, he's known from the 70s of running up to umpires when they make a bad call, and he'll scream, you cannot be serious. It's his most famous thing. Related back to serious, in my opinion, absolutely. Tenth level Jedis and people like that are not laughing. They go, wow, I've never put that together. People that are new to this go, that's the craziest thing I've ever heard. And I could be wrong, but if you think that's crazy, you don't know how this reality works. Okay, I could be wrong about this, but this is how it works. It, it is never too, it cannot be too strange. Okay, once Bart Simpson flashed his money in front of the, the 9-11 and the World Trade Center in that program, then, then the more absurd it is, the more it's potentially revealing the truth. There's us, we're doing the org chart still. Real humans, spirit beings that are in this environment getting spirit cooked, spirit cooking. You know, that, that's what we're, many of us are getting cooked. Many of us that are choosing the right path will will create armor for ourselves so we cannot be cooked. We're outcasts, we're conspiracy theorists. We have empathy and compassion. I had to, I had to cut off. I had to just stop writing. Um, tempted, we're, we're, we are constantly tempted to forfeit ourselves. We have to give pieces of ourselves away to the system. We have to give soul tokens away willingly. That's why I don't think it'll ever be able to come down and throw me down and put a vaccine in my arm. It just doesn't do business that way. Um, I would think whatever rules still exist would be breaking all of them. If it wants to eat that shit sandwich, well, then it's going to eat it. But I, I don't think anyone's ever going to come and pin you down and give you a vaccine. Because you, the, the evidence is you have to choose it. All right, not not in at least from our perspective here in the West. I understand somebody screaming at their at their um, computer. That, did the people in Aleppo choose to have their whole um, city bombed out? So they're going to the bathroom in a hole and they're they're drinking out of a rusty water pipe. They didn't know. They didn't choose that. So they're, 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 I agree. There are there are some aspects of what I'm presenting that don't make sense. You know, I don't have all the answers, but for the most part, for the most part in terms of it taking pieces of, you know, your spirit away, cooking your spirit, in, in that what's most precious to you, you have to give it away willingly. You have to degrade yourself. 
I'm sorry about what happened to the people in Aleppo because all these, you know, the, these, the, this conflict is, is laid down by the script and people get caught in the middle and they get blown up and they die and Aleppo is bombed out. You know, it's a, it's a mess. But um, they didn't, you know, they didn't choose that. That's a horrible toll on their avatar. But those people, that it didn't, they didn't get soul tokens from those people they bombed out. And they didn't give it, and they didn't give it away themselves. So there is a little bit of a difference here. It's not a, the most precious thing we hold is is our spiritual self, not holding on to the avatar that is rooted here. Then in, we're still doing the org, org chart. You have below us the degraded human, constantly looking to bind to the six 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 realm, constantly looking to merge with their phone, to have their phone remap their brain. They're constantly giving pieces of themselves away and soul tokens away. They're distracted. They have no spiritual identity. They, they're followers of the minions. The, you know, the stand and scream for the Beatles. In my opinion, the Beatles, the first few times it happened, it was, they were probably all actors. These young girls were probably all actors with the Beatles, and they showed the world that. And then they don't have to keep acting because then these girls saw that and they thought that's how they... I'm sure there's some people that got choked up and cry because the Beatles were so big, but I believe it was staged the first few times. Then then people just mimicked it. The degraded human will mimic that. Oh, when the Beatles come down off the plane, this is what I'm supposed to do, or this is what I'm allowed to do. So they didn't have to act anymore. This is my opinion. They identify only with earthly accomplishments. The degraded human, we don't want to damn the degraded human or somebody giving themselves away. We don't want to curse them say, ah, screw them. Like a, we, we might be putting the final nail in their coffin as we're, we've been used by the not milk system many times. We must wish them the best. We must hope they find a spiritual path. We must hope they cut the ties that bind them this pl- place. We must, um, you know, some people would say pray for them. That's not my thing. I would say the, my intention, I'll give them uh, my good intentions that they will uh, find a way out before they degrade themselves down to Schmeagel. But this is the, the process of what's happening with the degraded human. The degraded human, uh, from an imagery standpoint, if you, if you want to remember it this way, is like the portrait. To me, it's the portrait of Dorian Gray. A gigantic Mandela effect for me. Not the picture. Not the, not the Zabruta picture of Dorian Gray. It's the portrait. But now it's, now it's always been the picture. Of Dorian Gray, but anyway, forget it. Forget the Mandela effect. Um, it's just you know the the picture of Dorian Gray will reflect his 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 um, uh, rotting state, where his outward appearance is always you know a young man, a good looking man. The, the and you know I guess if he ever looks at the picture, is what it is. Then he, the, the spell breaks and he he rots himself. But if you could look into the spirit the spirit being cooked of a degraded human, you would see like the, the Dorian Gray image on the left. There's not a whole lot left, and it's ready to merge with the, with the minions of the not Nilk system, and it's, there's not a whole lot of connection to spiritual self. But on the outward side, look at the guy on the right. The degraded human looks great. I just got the partnership at the law firm taken care of. Just got the $400,000 bonus. Just leased the, uh, the, the his and her Teslas person on the right, they're a winner as far as this reality goes. But in terms of spiritual self, it's that creature on the left. They're a three-time loser. That's the way I see it. Then you have at the bottom the NPC, automaton. Okay? And we've talked about this. We'll be quick. They're either totally degraded, once human, or they're simply a character of this realm. I've got to stand up for a second, guys. My leg is going numb. Um... Well, Matt, why don't you stop recording? No, I don't, I don't like to do that. It doesn't matter if we know exactly what these creatures are or not. I don't want to say creatures. What these, they could be background role players. We don't know. It doesn't matter. But at this point, if you get to this level, you're, you're taking the download. You're doing exactly what the reality wants in terms of facilitate the society the reality wants to build. And um, I, I, once you get to this level, I don't think there is any way back. Now, your goal is actually quite simple. Goal in living life. Goal in, in winning. See, it's simple. First of all, if you're not sure to do, just remain human. Make a human decision in every choice you make. Is the human decision when birds start to build a nest? You, you, you know, you, someone say, uh, 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 what, what is the human decision? You know it inside you. You know it. A bird start to build their nest in my garage um, two years ago. 
and I went to pull the or shut the door, and I thought I can't. You know, they they've laid eggs in there. I'd leave the door open for weeks. It was a mess, but I couldn't. You know, I couldn't do it. I hadn't make the the human decision. The minions and degraded humans they don't make. I was a degraded human once. I took a, a nest of robin eggs that had put in my built in my door twenty years ago. And I just said, well, you shouldn't have built at my door. And I threw the nest with eggs into the... I feel horrible about it. I was a degraded human once. Many of us were. Just threw the nest with the eggs. Eh, I didn't, didn't care. Didn't affect me. So um, if you're not sure, make the human decision in every choice you make. Um, and then understand that means to, what that means to walk the path further, okay? To, to not just hold on to your humanity that they're trying to take, hold on to all your tokens that they're trying to take, to further separate from the material 666 place, further separate from those who will try to link you and bind you to it. So you, once you start to see clearly all the things over here that are trying to link you to this place, to, um, bind you to this place, oh, if you just do this, this, and this, you can get this award, you can get a Nobel Prize, you can get a partnership at the law firm, then, then you say, well, no, I'm going to take steps that separate from any accolade or award this system would give me. So the tug of war that seems to be going on between spiritual self, spiritual higher self, and the the temptations of the precious, the temptations of the 666 place, it seems like it's a really hardcore tug of war, and it's one-sided, because what's pulling on one side are the seven deadly sins, and all the temptations, and uh, drugs, and alcohol, and sexual debauchery, and you know, all the stuff pulling that, that tempt us, but it's, it isn't a real fair tug of war because we, we, we control everything. All we need to do is, is decide to pull on the side or cater to the side that's attached to something that's out of here, spiritual higher self. We can just immediately choose that side, and then the tug of war is over. There is no tug of war. That's an illusion. You know, one side pulls and binds to the material plane. One side creates desire and attachment and convinces convinces you the only metrics of success are associated with this place. But, you know, I put Lady Gaga over the lower chakra. I shouldn't have that. She she might sing well, but she's not going to... She's not going to... Um, what is it? Akeem's not going to sow his royal oats with her. Um, it's probably not even a woman. But there is no... It seems like a tough tug of war, but once you decide to just take the, the spiritual path, it's over. It doesn't matter who's pulling on the other side. Thanos, the Hulk, you just immediately pull him right over. But most people will, will never, you know, most people will not make that choice. Uh, they'll just keep getting pulled and pulled uh, down into the depths of the material realm. What are the steps to staying a real human being and becoming one even more separated from the 666 reality? Well, back to the basics. Separate from all energy-stealing systems immediately and never again. All energy-stealing systems like Republican, Democrat, no camps, no Black Lives Matter, no white Aryan groups, no uh, La Raza, no, um, uh, you know, pro-life, anti what I mean, just, well, pro, pro, that's a bad example. <laughs> you, you talk for an hour and see what you say. Uh, I'm all for not killing uh, babies. Pro-life uh, versus, uh, you know, anti-pro-abortion uh, is what I meant to say. Just any sort of camp that is obviously set up to steal energy. And almost all camps set up in the society are set up to steal energy or to focus energy in certain places that moves society in a, in a bad place. We start by seeing, in terms of, of, of us waking up to the right path, the human path, we start by seeing that everything on the screen is fake. Everything on the screen is fake. I don't have too many exceptions or any exceptions I can come up with for big events. It's all fake. And once you've seen 50 things that are fake and then the next 50 are fake, and then you don't need to see any more. The default is, if it's a big event on the screen, it's fake. No, this little man didn't shoot uh, Kennedy. Nobody did. Everything's fake. What did he say? Nobody shot Kennedy? I don't have time to do the dissertation on it, but it's, it's, it's so ridiculous at this point. It's obvious. Um, did you see Pulp Fiction? It's a Mr. Wolf truth drop. What happened when John Travolta shot uh, whatever his name, the kid in the back? 
See what happened to him? See, that's this is a not a Mr. This is a Tarantino truth drop. He wasn't trying to help us. He probably just had to. They have to put the truth out. It would be coming through a high level minion like Tarantino. Lesser producer or director wouldn't be able to do it. Shoots the kid in the back in the head. Well, look look at John Travolta. This is what would happen. Okay, uh, this is the coat she was wearing. Oh, but Matt, there's a speck of blood in her left sleeve. A speck. It would be that with a 308 rifle from a from a 200 yards. Okay. And even if the wind was blowing in a different direction, um, well, then, you know, assume she didn't touch him, I guess, the whole ride to the hospital. You know, that's an expensive coat, and she just didn't want to help her husband. It's a joke, okay? It's a joke. The reality plays games. Me and Dennis Rodman are going to threaten the world. So they, they, they create the biggest tyrant of all time, and um, they make him look like the, this, the biggest clown jerk um, there's not one person listening to this even, I mean, you could be in any physical condition. You could be a man, a woman, you could be, I mean, anybody could kick that guy's ass. I mean, any, they got the wimpiest little pudge ball in the world to be the scariest thing in the world. The reality plays games. Okay. Well, Matt, don't you know, he's not a threat anymore. Trump met with him. Oh yeah, I'm sorry. Sure. That happened. You know, that's not part of the script. What, what was I thinking? But the reality plays games. Um, Almost any man listening to this could kick this guy's ass with literally with both hands tied behind your back just by like headbutting him in the gut. He'd throw up his low main and then the, the fight would be over. The ruse is run by both the minions and the NPC automatons working together, basically taking the downloads and the instructions of the not nilk system itself. We know this. But we have to stop looking for a final bad guy. Well, Matt, above minion if if it's on TV, then it's a minion level. That Rockefeller is even Jacob Rothschild's on TV. It's that's, that's got to be uh, the Queen's on TV, Prince whatever's on TV, Prince Charles. That's that's they're not the wardens. Then that's minion level. Yes, that's minion level. But then what's that other level? Uh, you know what? We'll never know. Maybe there is no. Maybe it goes right to the reality itself. Um, but we need to stop looking for the bad guy. Whatever. If we understand what the system's doing and what it wants to do to us, well, who cares who's, who's ultimately pulling the strings? Then understand that the screen itself, it's much bigger than you think it is. It's the whole realm itself is the screen. It's not just a projection of Caitlyn Jenner at the ESPYs. It's the eclipse. I mean, all this stuff does, none of it adds up when you look at it with, with any, any, any degree of common sense. The whole thing is the screen. What is space? We don't know. We'll never know. What are the stars? I don't know. A reflection of ourselves, probably. A reflection of our higher selves. And things like our sun billions and billions and billions of miles away. No. Whatever they tell us, it's bullshit. Just, just, it's, it's, we know, we, it's great that they tell us what it is. Then we know we can cross that off our list as to what it's not. Mandela affected people don't have to be convinced their environment is not entirely real. Therefore, almost everything outside of yourself, everything outside of your immediate reality bubble is the screen. I just don't, you know, even the people don't see the, the, the Mandela effect. I, somebody I know went down to the Disney um, years ago, years ago, went down to the Disney um, Star Wars um, exhibit. And somebody said, I was just down there and C-3PO was all gold. I said, no, well, he's, no, the right leg bottom below the knee is silver. No, he says, I was just down there. It's all gold. So he took a picture of it. And, well, I'm looking at it. It's still all gold. It does look a little more silver than I remember. But it, the right leg is gold. And that's never been the case in reality. It's right leg below the knee is silver. So, you know, to me, this is this is tremendous residual evidence. What do you think? The, the Disney, they just got it wrong. They just got it wrong and left it that way. Ah, oh, you dumb bastards, you constructed him with all gold. The right leg below the knee is silver. Ah, do we really have to fix it? It's almost lunchtime. Ah, it's okay. Just, ah, F it. Leave it alone. Nobody will notice. They're never going to, it's Disney itself. They're never going to leave it that way if the guy that put it together got it wrong. It's residual evidence for an obvious Mandela effect. There's no other way to explain it. So, again, why do the WTCs, have thousands of media references where the famous buildings like the Empire State Building have very few. I mean, this is some, somebody sent this to me. This is some album cover. 
they put the guy that did the walk upside down and you know they photoshopped it but there's just there's just you know the world trade center is in thousands of media and songs and uh, comic books and destroyed movies and and all the other buildings collectively around the world that are more famous collectively they don't have as many times they've been destroyed you know um it's a retro causality in my opinion it really is so in general some, a friend of the channel sent this in you know, just it's just in general you, we don't have to figure it all out just stop thinking between the bookends because this is the only thing that makes sense between the bookends it has to be this there are many reasons how for example what we're looking at could be possible the possibilities should not be limited to what we understand even the person that sent this in was a little de you know not defensive but was saying well Matt, this is no psych so supernatural occurrence you know um, i just decided to put my cat in this picture and we had the free clip art which had the world trade center and then i don't i think they said we added the the meteorites coming in and okay but that seems like what happened but where'd you get the inspiration to do that from i believe all thoughts aren't our own all actions are not our own sometimes we have to d discern was that me that just wanted to do that or is that something influencing me why did the clip art, the free clip art, have to be the World Trade Center? Okay, what, why, maybe they put the free clip art out to the World Trade Center because they knew at least some people would destroy them in whatever they're going to be used, and that would add to the magic of what's going to happen. See, there are a lot, there's just, there's just, it, it, it we're not going to know or understand between the bookends. There are things in this reality, miles and miles on either side of our bookends, that we'll just never understand. And all we just need to do is remember to be open to it. Not that we have to understand it or figure this out. Expect strange synchronicities. Well, we already do, but it's good to remember this going forward. In a fluid world, we're always going to get this stuff from now on. Stop chasing and investigating every little thing and live your life walking the correct path. Um, these synchronicities, look at, and, and, I, and I predicted not long ago, and it's happening, that it would become exponential these sorts of conspiracy attached to everything, the truth drops attached to everything. I mean, just like Kobe is buried in Corona Del Mar, things like that. I mean, really, that's always going to be part of this reality, and it's and it's going to ramp up on steroids, like Kobe buried in Corona Del Mar. This, those sorts of weird synchronicities that link all the events together like this, it's just, you know, it's only going to get more intense. We need to stop thinking it's just regular men and women doing it. You know, these. there's no reason I, I put this picture here other than it's just an amazing picture. I don't know who's in that little basket. It's incredible. But, you know, regular men and women can't pull all this shit off a thousand times in a row. A thousand pretty major events just pulled off time after time from truck attacks on city streets to 9-11 to what's going on now with how they're somehow they're coordinating the exact... All the world leaders are saying the exact same thing. I just, you know... and. You can even if you work hard to explain away two or three or four of these events, we have you have another thousand you can explain away. It's not there's something else going on supernaturally um, beyond what just regular men and women can pull off. So it, and also expect the truth to be embedded in almost everything, especially the absurd or trivial Pied Piper. Um, the more absurd it is, sometimes the more truth it will reveal right in your face, and people won't notice it because they'll say, oh, there's no sort of metaphysical truth coming from a Simpsons episode. With That's what The Simpsons for. Nobody's watching that dumb show at this point. Probably has 10 viewers. Probably has like 10, 15 viewers a week. It's there just to drop truth. I mean, nobody gave a shit about The Simpsons after 1995. Any mistakes that they make, we thought in the truth community they were mistakes, they're not mistakes. It's all on purpose. I cut a little bit of the picture off, but um, it says the reality must also operate to your benefit for those uh, who will see and make it to your benefit, incorporate it uh, into you know things that we notice and gives us clues on how we should live our lives by not live our lives by not doing what the not milk system wants. This is that ridiculous scene in Belgium. Um, that guy's name was. Uh, I don't, I don't want to say it. I don't want to get, you know, who knows what's going to not prevent this video from loading. But this clown was supposedly thrown 50 feet in the air. And I like the woman walking right by 
Um, she's like, have you seen my other bag? I mean, just give me a, I mean, it's a joke. It's an absolute joke. He said he was shot and it was a bombing. He said to CBSN, he was shot and it was, there was no shooter, whatever. It's, it, it is all on purpose. The more absurd it is, it's all by design. Nobody ever made a mistake. They're not, I've had people explain that to me and say, Matt, they know no one's going to pay attention. They just don't put full effort into it. <laughs> really? You no, know, they have to do this for those that are able to notice. We've all forged chains in our lives. This is my favorite. Um, it's called, uh, not Scrooge, A Christmas Carol with George C. Scott, one of my favorite movies of all time, the one with George C. Scott. Um, we've all forged chains. Remove them. This is major life goal is to use the rest of your life to remove them, to cut ties uh, with this place. Not all at once. You have the rest of your life to do it. Now, if you have a bunch of system accolades and awards, then you're a three-time life loser. Here's Sir Patrick getting knighted. Oh, that's when I talk about a nail in a coffin. <laughs> you're a life loser if you go in for that. I'm telling you, there's, there's, I'm not, that tie is so strong. It's like um, being pinned under the Golden Gate Bridge. So you're just not getting up from, you know, we say we have to cut ties, cut ties. They're strong ties. That's a metal chain, but they can be cut. You know, it might take a while, but, you know, imagine a chain the size of the Golden Gate Bridge, and that's what's happened in old Patrick here. And not in this lifetime, Patrick, but he's probably, you know, again, a minion. He's probably doomed to come back here over and over again anyway. But um, trust me, I could get an invitation from the queen, and then, oh, I ain't going. Oh, no thanks. No thanks. Don't want any system accolade award or... Um, Standing ovation. Other forms of losers that get system accolades and awards. This is the Nobel Prize medal or coin that they get. There could be a few exceptions of people that have gotten awards because they have to look legitimate. If they kept giving Nobel Prizes to people like Obama every time and, um, you know, uh, Son of Sam every time and people like that, then then they would just give themselves away. So, so you know, there's probably some people in math that really did put together some neat stuff, and they have to look legitimate. But in general, you get accolades and awards from the system, you're a three-time loser. I keep saying it's like three strikes in, um, you know, the California system. I don't know why I keep saying that. Oz gave the brainless guy a handgun. Funny shit. I'm not going to talk about the Mandela effect, but... Um, Maybe this represents the straw man. The not milk must contract with you through your legal fiction, not directly with your real self. So can't can't work directly. It's another way it ties you to this place. You breathe life into one of the main uh, chains that tie you to the 666 realm. Carbon, six electrons, six protons, six neutrons. Um, we're, I guess, you know, avatar made of carbon. So it can't, it can't really do business with you directly. So the the legal fiction is your name, first name, last name in all caps, name in all caps on your driver's license, name in all caps on your social security card, et cetera, et cetera. And then you have to, you continuously are fooled and tricked your entire life to breathe life into kind of like a part of you or a mirror image of you that is is part of the system. Okay, so that's called the straw man, and um, it all relates back to, you know, incorporation and all that nonsense. But, um, you know, we need a driver's license. We can't throw it out the window. We need a social security card. But with intention, you can take life away from the straw man. You can say, I just got my, my license renewed. And as you see, don't ever downplay the power of your intention and what potentially we're all capable of. I'm going to assume I'm capable of incredible things They're like spiritually moving mountains i'm gonna i'm gonna i'm gonna err on that side that every intention i have will come true or why do they spend so much time trying to influence my intention so when i come out of the um, dmv i'll say i need this thing i need this thing to um you know to drive but this isn't who i am i give no i breathe no life into it i give none of my self away to it just why not just just practice that intention? If you go to click a box, I am not a robot. Why is it, why does he ask you to click that? Because one day you will be a robot, or any terms and conditions. See, I, I I've got to click yes to this to get my cable installed, but I'm giving no, 
um, none of my energy is going to it. That's reserved for me. I'm not making contract with it. You can, why not just, just reiterate those intentions every chance you get? Somebody actually came to me and said, I don't want to give the system any energy. Should I cash the stimulus? I said, just, yeah, but just, just, just have the right intention. Here you're taking the check into the bank. Say, first off, this is my money. This isn't, I'm not getting anything. I'm not going into contract. This is, I give, I've given them a hundred times this. This is your money coming back to you. There's no contract if it's your money coming back to you. But in general, let's say I give, I give, I, I'm not, I'm not going into contract. I'm not entering into contract by taking this money. You know, those types of intentions. How powerful are they? I don't know, but I'm going to err on that side every time. And I'm going to assume it works and I'm going to assume it is powerful. Separating the breadcrumbs, finding the real breadcrumbs the system has to deliver amongst the ones, all the ones that are pissed on. Now, most in this realm are pissed on. Most of the ones are bright yellow, you know, but don't get pissed off. Leave, just leave the degrading systems behind, but always keep a lookout for the true truth drops, the, the authentic breadcrumbs, the reality must deliver. And we know enough now, we don't need bagger vans to tell us what to do. Do we need that anymore? No. We know enough now, we don't need anything but ourselves anymore. You put us on an island with Wilson, the beach ball, whatever that thing is, we'd be fine. We know all we need to know at this point about what we need to do for ourselves. But it's fun to keep looking around. You see something like Bagger Vance. You know, inside every one of us is a true authentic swing we were born with. Something that's yours and yours alone that can't be taught, that can't be taken away. It just has to be remembered. It's not about a golf swing. It's about your true self. I mean, that, 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 you know, he says, the society tries to take it away from us between all the wouldas and couldas and shouldas. It's just about life. So, so we don't need this, but we should, be, we should have the eyes now to notice these sorts of, of truth and, and to, to apply it whenever applicable. My favorite is always Dances with Wolves. It always will be. And anybody comes to me and says, well, Matt, if it's such an amazing truth drop in terms of how people should live their lives, how are they able to make it through Satanic Hollywood and Kevin Costner? I don't, I don't know. They have to. Maybe they, they, they took too much that year, too much yin, and they had to give the yang back. And they said, I will make this dumb movie about this guy that goes out west and nobody will take anything. They just embed all the truth in that movie. Nobody, and how many people other than us would even pay attention to it? So, so in other words, people would say, well, why would they give away such truth? Well, besides you and me and, you know, five other people listening, who, how many people got this sort of truth from Dances with Wolves? Nobody. Nobody, except, uh, not nobody, I don't want to, I don't want to put that intention out, but very few. So, why not put it out? So, I'm saying, it's only, who's it helping? Us, that already know the path to take anyway. But anyway, maybe they had to do that because they bit off too much, took too big of a bite that year. But during the scene, one of the first opening scenes of the movie, he's in the middle of a Civil War battle, the lowest level down into the 666, right in the middle of war itself, right into the middle of war, a battle scene in death. Can't get any, can't get any lower probably than the 666 incarnation, where we are now. Probably can't get any lower. Christian hell, whatever, but in terms of incarnations and lifetimes, this is about, you know, probably as low as it, as it gets, uh, this experience. But in, but in terms of then inside this experience, the lowest you can get is to be on a battlefield and have the death around you. So he can't get any lower. Okay, can't take his spirit any lower inside the snow globe than where he is in the scene. He says, you know, F you to it. He says, you know, I'm not going to comply... I'm not going to shoot back. I'm not going to engage in this battle. He just says, F it. And he rides out across the lines, just saying, obviously, the Christ reference uh, on the cross to succumbing to it, submitting to it. Ah, shoot me. Do what you need to do to me. I'm not, I'm not taking this crap anymore. Whatever. Just kill me then. Just, he does not complaining. Just, you know, and of course, you know what happens in the movie, he rides across and Civil War, you had, to, you had to load like one bullet every minute or something. I don't know. Depends on the type of rifle. You know, some obviously they had some repeating rifles, but most people out on these battlefields had, had the old-fashioned rifle. Took a while to, to load or to re, reload. So they all use up their, their, their ammo. None of them hit him, of course, which gives the North an advantage. They win the battle because of his brave actions, which was nothing to do with that. 
and then he gets his own, his, his, his reward is to get an assignment to his post. And what does he choose? He chooses the post farthest away from the battle, farthest away from not Nilk society, some outpost way out in the middle of nowhere, just wants to completely separate himself from not Nilk reality. And then we start to see the transition, the slow change. He, he's wearing less and less of the soldier's uniform as the scenes go on. And then ultimately, all ties are cut. At the end, he's wearing the Sioux uh, clothing, you know, the Sioux necklaces. He doesn't have his soldier's hat on. And so there's a slow change. This movie is brilliant in this regard. A slow change of him no longer putting on the uniform, no longer putting up the flag, just transitioning away from the not Nilk minion sponsored society. And people don't, you know, even realize when they're watching this, this is what's happening. But he's he's walking the path of a true human being, as said by Kicking Bird. Kicking Bird. Kicking Bird um, stands with a fist. Um, he's, he's walking. She, he says, I'm proud of you. He says, why? Kicking Bird says, because you're finally walking the path of a true human being. And that's that's the progression of him moving away from the sick society, walking the path of a true human being. That's what the entire movie's about. The animals... And where the animal is afraid of him, then the animals come up to him. He becomes friends with the animals. And a complete transition and shedding of the, the path or the life path that this society wants you to take, me to take, and him to take. Until ultimately he has shed everything. And, um, and then, of course, what happens? He's being pursued then. He's now become an enemy of the system. He's being pursued by the minions of the system. And uh, we certainly uh, are familiar with that concept. Everyone is used by the overhanging reality. Everybody has been used at some point. Every group, from NPC to the top of the secret societies, everyone has been used, in my opinion. The only way out is to realize it, see the scripts handed to you, see how you've been used, and use the rest of your life to separate from the scripts, to cut the ties or to cut the ties that you created yourself in every way you have been used. And I remember I was saying, I'm saying from NPC, little NPC, down to people that rule these secret societies, I don't, nobody is getting, getting off scot-free. Everybody is being used, no matter how much knowledge you carry or whatever. And the idea is to separate from it and to first realize it. And then, you know, the, some of these are stretches in terms of me connecting things, but it's always good to have this set of eyes to look for these sorts of truth drops, and it also can be fun. Is the not milk humongous? You know, I'm going to do it. I'm going to do the, the impression. i got to cover my mouth. Though. Just walk away. Just walk away and I'll spare your lives. There's been too much blood, too much death. Okay, just walk away and I'll spare your lives. Is that a truth drop? What was that little group of Australians doing inside their little with their white outfits and their their white shoulder pads? They were they were they were oil pumping. They were that's that's absolutely attached to the not milk reality. They're oil pumping. They were hoarding oil. And you know, what was the, was the not milk saying or the or the reality saying, you know, just just walk away from from you trying to hoard oil and just walk away and I'll spare your lives. Well, I agree this is a stretch. Of course, this is a stretch. I, everything in a movie is not a truth drop. I know. I know. This is a stretch. Because you, one would say, well, as soon as they walked away from their oil endeavor, then I, this guy would just take their heads off right outside with an axe. Okay. I hear you. It's just a way of looking at things. And um, I'm not saying this is the truth drop. It just is it interesting. It came to me. New element. The not milk in general is out to convince you to play it safe. Basically, this theme keeps repeating, all or nothing. There's a series on Prime with these different sports teams, all or nothing. Um, you know, you have to go all in or shed everything, you know, to get through the keyhole. There's a camel can get through a keyhole better than the, the rich man. Um, you know, it, it, it may be not be all or nothing 100%, but if you don't get close to a certain mark, then it might be nothing. I'll start over again. So one reason it works to convince you all the negative is real is so you hold back and don't live life to the fullest. Play it safe is a vote or a chain to the reality. 
Playing it safe is voting for the reality. Worrying about the future is a wasted now moment. There's something that came to me not long ago where I just said to myself, well, if you're not all in into living life to the fullest, then it's like all or nothing. And it, it seems like, you know, I get my cues because I always say the reality gives itself away. They're always asking us to play it safe, you know? And this is another, just a general analogy, uh, Gulliver tied down, Gulliver's Travels is a, a representation potentially of all the ties that bind to this place. But I've never read Gulliver Travels, so I don't know. It just hit, the image hit me, so I put it in. Um, how many retirement commercials have you seen in your life? 20,000? You know, it's all about, are you saved enough for retirement? It's just the same. And it's not just, when it happens that much, guys, I don't think it's about just companies making money. It's some metaphysical truth. So let's just read this and then we'll go. The rat race. Okay, the rat race. Why is it called the rat race? Making ties to this place by putting forth the intention that the 666 place is so important, people will spend their entire lives planning for it through retirement savings. Like this is a prudential commercial. They're, they're planning because they want more of it. They, they love it so much. Is that what the whole retirement commercials, the, the, the 200,000 commercials have been about? over the past 30 or 40 years. Are you, are you kind of like making a metaphysical contract? Now, guys, I'm not saying that go penniless into once you become 65 and just surf and survive day by day. That's not smart either. But in general, all this retirement planning, are you making a metaphysical contract saying, I love this place so much. I'm McDonald's loving it so much this realm this life this place i covet it so much i made so many ties that i do all this retirement savings and all this retirement stuff because i want so much more of it and i'm going to dread the day of my death because i don't want to leave it i think this is creating ties to it i really do if you understand where i'm going with that so times square uh steven sent this in who works in new york it's just people are just it's just times square should be packed nobody april 2020 do I see one person there that's not living in fear? If you look down to the left, I see a little person. Give that person some credit. The Not Milk marvels at its recent success, in my opinion. It it probably thought on the scale it could get to a 60, and the Whopper's operating at a 90% efficiency, and they just going, wow. I don't think they, they, especially after all the testing on other crap like Zika, they had any idea that they the they would be getting these results, all right? So um, the greatest ties and the greatest Jacob Marley chains that we create as real humans based on falling for the endless tricks and deception of the reality as it's brought through their minions, no doubt these are the big ones. Fear, anger, covet, jealousy, attachment to material things. It all feeds energy, loosh, back to the reality itself. All of these emotions feed the energy back. Interest-free loan, for example, you know, tied to material things. All the what are we would be bartered with now? But you can still buy a car right now in the middle of this crisis. You get an interest-free loan. No, they're very interested in you getting, and it's not a free loan. Of course, the the free has to be compared combined with loan, and it's anything but free because you end up paying a whole lot more back once the interest kicks in. It's usually interest-free for a short period of time. No, they're very interested in you t- doing all of chasing all of that sort of material attachment because it all binds you to this place all ties must be shed now and before death we don't have to go live in a cardboard box tonight you know anybody i just watched matt and we're taking the family to the hills of montana in a cardboard box based on watching matt's video i don't think i have that much influence but you do it over the course of the rest of your lifetime you know like um like dismantling a bomb you know, slowly, the blue wire, the red wire, the, oh, isn't that interesting, blue and red. But you dismantle it, take the ties, oh, I see this, oh, I didn't realize I was being sucked into this, that's a tie, I'm going to undo that, I'm going to take six months to undo that, then I'm going to work on this one. You have time, you have time, but you have to start start in that direction, because who knows how much time any of us have. Fear of death is perhaps the greatest tie to this world. People will do anything not to leave this place. This horrible fear of death. Oh, no. Oh, no. 
oh, we're going to be killed. That, that, that type, putting that emotion out, is are, are all these ties binding you? Uh, you don't see them. They're just binding and binding and binding and binding because the, the reality is interpreting it as, this person was McDonald's loving this place so much that they're just so afraid. They don't want to leave. So we'll make sure they come back. I mean, it, it could be that simple. You know, no fear. If you truly understood what you are, there's no fear. Fear is like being trapped here forever. Or fear is being immortal to this place. The fear is being uploaded into a upload into a computer or something. And that's, I mean, no way. Get me back on spiritual path out of here. Fear is not being able to do that. Dear leader, you just screwed us for 50 years. Now we cry for you. What have we been taught to do at funerals? All right, well, there's no reason to use the uh, Kim Jong-il crap here. It was just so absurdly ridiculous, all how fake, but he crying over a dear leader. Dennis Rodman sending his love from Chicago, although he's more of a, he's more of a friends with Un, not ill. This is the ill funeral. Um, but, but funerals, what have we been taught to do? Um, oh, just so horrible, a cry, and you know, oh, it's just, and, and people would yell at me and say, well, Matt, that's because they're going to miss their loved ones, and that's not all of it, absolutely not. If they truly believed they're out of here in a better place, there would be a, a, there would be tons of tears because they're going to miss them, but there'd be that smile that, you know, we've, cr- we've cried and smiled at the same time for different reasons, all of us have. And there'd be that cry and that smile. I'm going to miss them, but I'm so happy for them. No, it's so distraught and so somber and so just pressing at funerals. That's what we've been taught. And the masses will just mimic what they've been taught. And that's another tie to this place. It's so horrible to leave this place. I'm going to cry because this person had to leave the wonderful 666 realm. And no, be happy that they got out of here. If they live their life in a certain way, cry. If you cry because you're going to miss them, have a big smile on your face. That is not the message the not milk system wants. It's so horrible that though they're this. Can you believe this person in this coffin in front of me is not going to experience this wonderful six 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 realm? I'm going to I'm going to miss them, but I feel so bad for them. It's not just because you're going to miss them. That is not the way people react. Most people react at funerals just because it's very negative. Their faces. It's very horrific. It's like something really horrible has happened. Missing him is one thing. You see what I'm saying? All right. Is this the last slide? No. Um, in the end, um, I have to do the Danny Trejo. Uh, I've said many times, but there's different people who are at different levels. How do we know we're this being of spirit that has a way out and all this crap you're talking about, Matt? How do we know? Because it just it wouldn't be getting in our business all the time. What's with the endless distraction? What's with the endless tricks? What's with the endless lies and deception and leading us over here and leading us over there and hiding our, our history and hiding our connection to spiritual? Why does it go through all that? Danny Trejo says to Triple X, we don't like funny guys. You funny guy, funny guys that get in our business. That's terrible. I've done it better than that. Whatever. Um, it gets in our business. Why would it get in our business if we're just what the atheists say, going to go into the dirt? I've said this a million times, but it, to me, nothing's more important than that. Knowing what you are, even if you're not convinced of what you are, because of the way they act. You know, if Danny Trejo didn't think Triple X was a threat, well, what's he doing all this for? Why is he putting a machete up to his... What's he... Would, would Danny Trejo be doing this to an ant out, out back behind the barn? No. Triple X is a threat. It's the same thing, the reality to us to the real spirited uh, human beings, the people that are still real, really, I don't like human being. That's a not nilk world, world like um, Grassy Knoll, but I don't have anything. I got to come up with something else. I don't have anything else to say. Intention potentially is everything. All of that bullshit. And all I had to do was click my heels three times, running around to wizards and witches and being attacked and flying monkeys and throwing water. And all I had to do, it was all within me all along. It's probably the biggest truth drop of all time. Oh, yeah, the pentagram is uh, right down. Well, Glenda the Good Witch presenting the pentagram. But I don't care. I don't care. It's probably the biggest, still biggest truth drop of all time. It was all within you all along, you dumb jerks. All you had to do was click your heels three times with your the set in intention. Know what you're capable of. That's why I, every assumption I make, I assume, 
like if I back up a thousand miles from the snow globe, that inside, um, this is a connection to something that is incredibly powerful, something that potentially always will be, always has been, whether I'm an aspect of it, part of it, but, 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 you know, it's always thinking we're, it's always telling us we're powerless. We can't do this. We can't do that. We're just dirt food. We're going to the, in the, earth, the earth. Like the atheist says, you're nobody. You have no skills, abilities, no, no personal magic in you. You can't do anything. I'm going to assume the opposite. That's the message it wants. So I'm going to assume the opposite. So if I get my license renewed, I'm going to just look down at it and say, I don't give this any, any, I need this to drive, but I don't give it any of my energy. My intention is I don't give any of myself away. I'm not breathing any new life into the straw man. I just do the intention all the time. You know, all the time. I got my stimulus check, took it to the, the bank. And as I drove up to the teller, I said, um, again, I said, this is my money. I've given him taxes much more than this. This is my money. So there's no, by itself, there's no contract I'm making with this. But in any other interpretation, I, I declare as null and void. I'm not giving my energy in doing this. You know, this is the system they created that they forced me to live in. I'm not making contract with it. I'm not, I'm not creating ties to it. I set it right over my, my stimulus check. Well, that's a waste of time. Um, what if it's not? I don't know. I feel deep down it's not. I feel, you know, you expect to get out of here, you're going to get out of here. Because what does it do? It just constantly tricks you to believe you're powerless and you have no hope. So obviously, if that's what it's doing to us, tricking us all day long to believe we're just powerless, you know, schmiegel creatures, like, like powerless uh, worms, then that tells me I'm much more than that. Pretty simple stuff. Perhaps the greatest truth of all time is carrying your cross in the right way. You know, mimic his teaching and his no fear, no ties attitude. That's what I like about th- this teaching. Follow, you know, h- how will you carry your, your, your cross in this life? There are many paths to win, in my opinion. Many paths to win. I don't think billions of a- Asians are going to hell, as the evangelical Christian would say, because they didn't throw themselves before Jesus. Now, I don't buy that. Billions of Hindus are all going to hell. And billions of Asians are all, everybody's going to hell if they don't throw themselves before Jesus and beg for permission or a way out. Sorry, I don't buy that. I appreciate uh, the teachings, appreciate the message. I immediately see the carrying the cross with no fear, not begging uh, Pontius Pilate, oh, please give me one more, you know, begging, no asking, just, just, okay, whatever, get me out of here. You know, probably expecting the crowd to choose Barabbas, um, you know, that the truth drop. Of course, they chose the criminal and the murderer, and um, no, no begging for life, no, okay. No fear, not no more ties, you know, to this place. You know, I understand the Christian telling me, well, if he's the son of God and God itself, he's not going to be tied to this place. I understand your position. My mind's a little bit different, but I'm just, I, I appreciate the teaching and the message. All right. I believe there's many paths to win. I don't believe all of Hindu India is doomed. I don't believe that. I believe we're all here to do similar things for ourselves. Thanks for listening, guys.